समस्त जन कल्याण निरत करुणय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विवर लास्ट ईवनिंग we discussed two important points to cultivate devotion one is what bhagwan ved vyas has to say according to vyasa doing puja daily would increase the devotion whether it is so material expression of puja externally performed or manasik mentally performed puja means at every time we are offering something to the lord that very thought of giving would expand love and that love it is since it is towards god it becomes devotion so performing puja consistently would cultivate devotion vyasa and then we saw gargarishi gargarishi said listen to the stories of the lord about him the more we get to know about the lord the more we would start admiring the lord then when we admire we would like to possess that's what we whatever we possess today which is very dear to us is something which we would have loved and admired so glorifying the lord would eventually make us admire about the lord and once we start admiring the lord we would like to possess those qualities possessing divine qualities is equal to becoming divine that's why it is so easy for us to follow how a great master has lived mahapurushas because they are the visible demonstration for us of living vedantic truth how a stata pragna would respond how a master would respond to a given situation once we get to know how they respond and we admire their way of respond then we would like to possess that that way admiring and possessing the values and the qualities of a great person is equal to rising ourselves to the qualities what the great person has somebody gave me one book different ways great people would respond different situations on which a great person would respond one was how would buddha respond in a traffic jam when we are stuck in a traffic how do we respond how do you think buddha would respond to a traffic jam quite interesting right the very thought how buddha would respond to a traffic jam think or how krishna would respond to betrayal if you're betrayed how would krishna respond the moment we start looking through the higher our way of responding would be better so that is why lives of saints great people noble people about the lord when we get to know more about them we would slowly imbibe those qualities katha dishu iti gargah gargrishi says listening to the stories of the lord would create devotion then in sutra 18 we see atmarathi avirodhene avirodhena iti shandalyah atmarathi reveling in oneself 
atmarati and anything which comes as an obstacle then that is not a devotion all that which brings you to the lord all that which makes you remember the lord that is called devotion anything which is contrary to reveling within is not a devotion atmarati avirodhini whatever makes us revel anything which would be helpful to revel is called is is a good method to develop cultivate devotion for some people it can be puja for some it could be japa for some it could be karma yoga whichever because each one of us are very very different our mind will adopt different methods which can inspire so whatever inspires us that we should take up and move forward if something which is taking us away from our regular practice then we should avoid it anything helpful to revel within that should be continued in simple if we have to say anything which is tamasic should be dropped for example lethargy it can come on our way and be a big hindrance to reach the lord so those kind of things which are taking us away from the lord should be avoided and all that which helps us to go near the lord should be taken up gurudev used to say if your mind can't go to the lord we struggle hard to take the mind to the lord it's it's not easy every time we try the mind if our mind is not able to go to the lord he says bring the lord to the place where your mind is now this is there is hope right doable my mind is not going there but i can bring the lord to the place where my mind is where is your mind right now everybody's mind would be obsessed with their objects of attachment that which we are deeply attached we would be thinking of it again and again a mind would go in those areas to which the to which we are attached continuously mind revolves around things which we are deeply attached so bring the lord to the place of your attachment how if my mind can't go there bring him here how where let's say you are attached to your family look at it as a gift of the lord you are there taking care of it this family is given to me by the lord and i take care of it everything which we are attached if we can dedicate it to the lord as as our offering etc then that becomes prayerful so whatever we are attached let us look at it as a gift given to us by the lord and how we take care of it what we do with that let it become our offer to prayer to the lord if this we start practicing something else would happen to us slowly slowly like yesterday we discussed it is impossible to love without giving if we love we have to give and if we dedicate something to the lord we would dedicate our best nothing short of best personally if you have taken up something and saying 
This I am offering to you, O Lord, be it your Guru, be it the Lord himself who is very dear to you. This I am offering to the Lord. The moment we feel personally this piece of work or this um, responsibility is my dedication to the Lord. The moment we feel that way, that work will become qualitative. Dedication is a powerful means, very powerful means to make excellence a habit. Try and understand. Just imagine excellence has become a habit. In whatever we do, we can always improve. Whatever we do, there is a scope for rising it up to set the standards up. Dedication becomes a very powerful way to make excellence a habit. Why? Every time we dedicate something, we want to give it to the Lord better. So everything which helps us, it can be the work dedicated, it can be the puja, it can be the japa, it can be anything. <coughs> if we start dedicating it, every other thing which helps us to remember the Lord, consider that as devotion. If anything which is taking you away from it, which does not remind you of the Lord, that is no use to us. So this way, Shandalya Rishi says, one can cultivate devotion. <coughs> we saw Vyasa, Garga, Shandalya. Now Narad himself says, Narad says, what, according to him, what is the method to cultivate devotion? Naradaha tu tad arpita akilacharata, akilacharata tad vismarane parama vyakulata iti. According to Narad Rishi, Narad says, if you forget the Lord and that pains you, that will bring in devotion. Today, I did not dedicate my work to the Lord and you feel bad about it. It should give you a pain. Whenever vismarane, whenever you have forgotten the Lord, it should give you pain. Today morning, I did not do japa. And it should be painful. Then it is an expression of devotion. If you feel that I did not do it and it pains you, therefore you will not avoid, avoid the next time because it is paining. If we forget to remember the Lord, it should hurt us. It should be, we should feel pained. That is the way. If that pain doesn't happen, then there is no devotion there. Most people in the tight scheduled world with hectic life, prayer becomes the last priority. And we are very comfortable with it. That is not correct. Prayer should not be the last priority. It should not be. If it is, and if we are comfortable with it, then that is dangerous. So if we miss our regular practices, etc., we forgot to remember the Lord, then it should pain. Like sometimes, uh, someone who is very dear to you, you forgot to wish them, let's say it could be birthday, it could be anything, anniversary or something else, you forgot to wish them. And saying, later you remember, oh, I, sh I did not wish them. This could be very friendly. But if it is mixed with gratitude and you fail to remember, it hurts. I should have done it and I missed the point and it hurts. 
that kind of a hurt should be there if we fail to remember the lord then that is still devotion because it hurts you and next time you will remember to do it if we fail to remember the lord and we doesn't even bother us then we need to understand that we need to start again and refocus ourselves it's a very practical advice narad rishi says i did not do my puja i did not do my japa today i did not study i did not remember the lord and i'm comfortable with it absolutely fine then that is dangerous oh i did not do and it hurts me yes there is hope so not to forget is important and if we forget it should be hurting it should be pained this is how devotion is cultivated four great rishis have spoken to us now we will go to the next topic which we said we will discuss and that is sutra number 46 those who have a book you can go it is sutra number 46 this is a very beautiful portion 46 47 48 49 50 5 sutras we will discuss this is talking about who can transcend who can overcome or who can cross maya how to cross maya how to cross limitation how to cross that how do we cross limitation how so he says here kastarati kastarati maya who crosses who crosses maya kah kah tarati kah tarati kah tarati maya kastarati kastarati maya yes sangam tyajati first point he who overcomes attachment yes sangam tyajati point number 1 who can overcome maya one who drops off attachment sangam tyajati what is maya that which we need to cross what is maya maya is a very peculiar force which makes us see things which do not exist makes us perceive things which doesn't have an existence that which is not there appears to be it is not there but it appears to be in the chapter 9 of bhagavad gita krishna says a very beautiful verse bhagwan krishna says this asukam lokam what is this world asukam lokam this world is joyless anithyam asukam lokam imam prapya bajaswamam anithyam this world is impermanent asukam there's no joy in this world having come here imam prapya bajaswamam seek me now krishna says in this world there is no joy what we get would be very very relative what we seek would be absolute fulfillment and that the world can never give it is not there in the world but it appears that the world will make me happy all of us fall for it 
continuously we are trying that this if i get that if i get if this i achieve and that will do this will do will make me happy continuous feeling but the world doesn't have the ability to give that what we seek as absolute fulfillment is not possible from the world but it appears every now and then it appears ha ah, if i get this i'll be happy if i get this i'll be happy we go on seeking we get it for a while for a moment we are happy that's all very soon it is lost once i took a group of young people school students studying 12th standard 12th grade 16 17 years old around 200 300 of them were there we went for a camp to a place called assam in india northeastern india and there is a beautiful national park called kasiranga and we are from tamil nadu all the way to assam quite a distance southern tip of india to northeastern india long journey kasiranga having reached kasiranga and kasiranga national park is famous for single horned rhino rhinoceros with one horn and we went into the forest to see them early morning everybody got up uh, took enough jeeps and we were going in to see not one rhino we could see that day not one and if at all there was any it would be too far you are not sure is that a rhino or a buffalo not sure it is too far now you i mean you are on a <laughs> and all these young people came to me and said swami ji what is this are we came all the way here could not see one what is this i said do we have any contract or something that the rhinos will appear when we go it's forest and they are not there the experts only took us and we couldn't find anything i called the tour operator and i said listen these kids are disappointed and it's not that uh, we come here very often so what should be done he said uh, i'll arrange a special trip we will try the opposite side because since we didn't find one this side we'll try the opposite side let's go there so he was very happy to take us on the opposite side i mean we were happy that he is giving us one more opportunity and we went on the opposite side in the forest and definitely there were hundreds of rhinos we could see in the middle of the forest there is this watch tower so i was standing there waiting for the group to reassemble one of the girls came to me totally excited what we saw a rhino ha huh? swami ji it was just 20 meters away from us and they were running and there was a baby rhino it just crossed our jeep was going 20 meters in front of us it crossed beautiful and she showed pictures and everything there was one boy standing next he knew how to kill somebody's joy <laughs> good at it knows how to do it he looked swami ji we saw a rhino just by our jeep we almost touched it her joy of watching a rhino 20 meters away immediately killed that moment can 
you mean to say there is joy in this world it appears that we get something for a moment we are deluded ah, thinking we are happy it gets off all the moments of joy disappears in no time something else has to happen the situation slightly altered joy gone the truth is it is not there it only appears to be there this is maya maya means that which is not existing appears to be there so who can cross this spell we are stuck in the spell who can get out of the spell kastarati kastarati maya naradrishi says ya sangham tyajati point number 1 who overcomes maya he who gives up attachment overcomes maya now this is important he who gives up attachment overcomes maya what is attachment what is attachment to any object or person we willingly surrender our freedom to a point it becomes difficult to live without it you you understand we willingly surrender to that point to live after that without it becomes difficult why i am attached i am attached to it now what can we do attachment means i have let myself to be identified with something absence of it i cannot live i become unhappy imagine the list of things we are attached to sangam tejati i plus i want holding on to something not allowing it to not not able to live without it you saw the movie on a quest some of you must have seen it on a quest there's one dialogue between swami chinmayanand ji and uh, swami tapon maharaj it's about the sunset sun uh, uh, in the mountains they would be standing there and tapon maharaj will show the sun saying did you enjoy the sun oh yes it was very beautiful were you attached to it no, no no i was not attached to it you are to have and not to possess this is a line in that movie you are to have and not to possess i wrote the script for that play okay no no i i need to confess something you know from where i picked up this line you are to have and not to possess madonna madonna she has an album ray of light the only album you can confidently recommend to listen <laughs> the madonna who was papa don't preach you understand the ray of light is a great evolution there she has sung a song in sanskrit ray of light has one song where madonna sings in sanskrit 
quite terrible to understand the pronunciation <laughs> but uh, we must give her the credit of attempting to sing in sanskrit that lot of lines in that album are vedantic highly inspired by shankara so there she says in one of the songs what can i do i have been told you are to have and not to possess that line is powerful you are to have not to possess just have don't possess when we look at a sunlight sunset or beauty of the moonlight or or the nature we see it it's so beautiful we enjoy it for the moment we are not possessive of it we have it we don't possess it if you learn this art to live here in this world to have and not to possess we will cross maya have don't possess if anything comes to us let's have it having it remains physical possessing it is with the mind mental mentally i become dependent don't depend on anything mentally just have don't possess if we can move around in this world this way to have and not to possess we live like a lotus in water touched by water but cannot make it wet that is an art i have seen gurudev living this life i have seen a person who is completely detached to whatever he was doing we have seen great masters many many people having these qualities but to see it consistently is very hard you understand that is a the difference there are people we have seen showing glimpses of detachment on many issues they are very balanced detached but to see it consistently not easy in gurudev i saw it this was in tamil nadu somebody was there it's it's my good fortune that i was present when this incident happened direct witness to this uh, conversation <coughs> somebody asked gurudev this chinmaya mission is expanding in 91 92 this is expanding what would happen to it after you it is expanding so much what would happen to this mission after you he left 25 years have gone so the question was what would happen to it after you i tell you this is where you see gurudev he laughed and he said i don't care what happens to it when i am living <laughs> you understood what will happen to chinmaya mission after you he say i don't care what happens to it when i am living i mean we <laughs> were just looking at him he says i don't care what happens to it when i am living who is bothered then he says it is the will of the lord he wanted it it happened when he wants to wind it up he will wind it up i have nothing to do neither am i a doer nor am i attached to this and when he said he meant every word of it and and he and he is good in dramatizing so he dramatizes it further 
and the dramatization is if i see chinmaya mission falling apart in front of me i will stand there and whistle <laughs> i'll stand there and whistle <laughs> seeing it fall this is it compared to him what is our achievement what have we achieved when we look at him and we see ourselves we have not even started okay forget achieving and to that what was done he was never attached stayed detached always why it's not mine it is the will of the lord i just take care to have and not to possess having doing everything is at the physical level possessing it is at the mental level attachment is at the mind level not at the physical level so to take care is important but to be attached is not correct to do your duty is the right thing to do to be dharmic is the right thing to do to be attached is not correct overcoming attachment is important to have and not to possess one one youngster came to me once people ask us different kinds of things help you know question spiritual this that and this one person came to me and he said samaji can you help me in writing my resume his cv you know bio data of him is applying for a job can you help me in writing my resume i said you're sure ha huh. i said okay what's your qualification write everything in the down last two about you you have to say something right there i told him right i have overcome attachment just right i have overcome attachment i have overcome fear you write he looked saying swami ji resume corporate office i am going no no i said you write man you just you trust me you write that then i said when they call you for the interview you may go with your suit blazer whatever you are wearing but make sure that you put lot of vibhuti in your forehead and you go i said you're going too far now <laughs> please i said just do you trust me you came to me you trust me do this put put vibhuti full and go now that is a peculiar sight with a suit and everything and then you put full vibhuti carrying your file and going for an interview and in your resume i have overcome attachment and fear now when they saw this guy coming like this and these two lines naturally they had no other question to ask <laughs> you have overcome attachment please explain see it's an art of you know to write a resume where they should ask the questions you want not whatever they like it should be like it should be designed the way that uh, they ask only the questions you want now how to overcome attachment good question and he has been with us in the yuva kendra so when that question came to him he was at utmost comfort because we have read this in kindle life we have read this in self unfoldment how to overcome attachment now he started explaining how to overcome attachment go on. those guys are stunned listening to him at this young age what is this guy talking about and then to end it all he said do you know why i have kept vibhuti on my forehead this is ash 
this body what i wear will one day become ash and i remember it by rubbing it daily in my forehead frontal lobe of memory brain frontal lobe of the brain memory seat of memory i rub there huh? what this body what i wear will become ash one day you think that was interview it was more like a chick class chinmay yuva kendra class they were surprised stunned sent him through ah, okay selected next round no questions asked no technical questions nothing only this question now leave that incident but don't you think somewhere in our resume before we finish our life this line should be there i have overcome attachment it should be there then we have lived fully somewhere we should get it how quickly we do it it's up to us but it should be there what did you achieve i managed to overcome attachment that is a great achievement it is not easy but worth attempting shri arbindo says go for the difficult please remember it's a beautiful line go for the difficult we like to settle down to ordinary mediocre settle down with things which are easily doable arbindo says go for the difficult if it is difficult go for it go for the difficult overcoming attachment is difficult go for it worth trying it should be there as a seeker it should be there yes i went into this world maybe things on the world worldly level we achieve various things personally what did you achieve managed to overcome attachment that is worth doing so who crosses maya he who overcomes attachment make it a point to overcome attachment ya sangam tyajati how do i do it i can have something be with it but don't be attached to it do not take anything to be yours ya sangam tyajati point number 2 yo mahanu bhavanu sevate mahanu bhavanu sevate mahanu bhava great people sevate service serving great people noble people mahan wise men being around the wise people observing them being with them could be very effective way that's why satsang is powerful when we are with satsang we transform we change so serve a wise person so that the wisdom comes to us the transformation would slowly come slowly slowly come we have to be serve a wise person the city i come from is chennai in india there was a person very notorious involved in underworld activities a kind of a don underworld activities a kind of a don liquor baron and when liquor was prohibited illicit imagine this person owns few theaters in the city involved in underworld kind of activities smuggling and different kinds of stuff doing illicit liquor business notorious yeah. 
he would come to meet gurudev when he walks inside the house where gurudev stays others would start looking at him saying why did he come and if the press the media or someone takes a picture of this would be like look who is with him so when he walks inside you know the others would feel very uncomfortable saying why is this man coming he will come sit if he is coming for the talks that is different he comes uh, to the house where swami ji stays will come sit there and gurudev also will talk to him and all that and one day gurudev shocked all of us at that time i was still in uh, chinmay yuva kendra i did not even join the ashram he shocked everybody saying my next yagna when i come to chennai this person will inaugurate it do you understand so and so will come and inaugurate gurudev had this love for such challenges that he would he called him said he is going to inaugurate the yagna people are worried seeing him you know and he now what does he have in him to inaugurate a yagna very well known in the city so all were like what is this and one or two members gathered courage and went and told gurudev saying swami ji this will hurt the reputation of the organization itself we should not allow him on stage to inaugurate your yagna whatever he does is absolutely opposite please leave it he makes a decision he knows what it is so he laughed he said i know what i am doing and once he has said that nobody will go to him and i will say you know try change this thing that he said it and this man comes to inaugurate the yagna one year later he comes to inaugurate the yagna and he goes on stage and says i would not have accepted this at all because i know it is not correct i do not deserve anything to be here on stage to inaugurate but i accepted it only to show this person's greatness swami chinmayanand ji's greatness i have accepted it i am here only to share some way back 6 months or 9 months ago i received a letter from gurudev saying i have absolute faith in you now gurudev says this i have faith in you yagna is a sacred work and since you have to inaugurate it for next 6 months you will live a life of a sadhak vegetarian food no alcohol none of your other habits what you have nothing other make wind up everything you may wish to go back to that life after the inauguration but till the inauguration keep off one letter the man comes up there and saying last 6 months i have done whatever he has said every morning he asked me to go to a partha sarathi temple krishna's temple in triplicane every morning from my house i'll walk to the temple i'll come back look at that person for him to keep off all this for 6 months was not easy he said i did all this for the only reason this person has written i have faith in you serving a great master can make us transform 
we can change completely. Yo mahanu bhavanu sevate. Following what the wise people have told us, what the great masters have told us, simply serving these great masters, just following what they have told us, doing things what according to their vision, what is to be done, will transform us. Being in that companionship is the most powerful, quickest way to transform. Being in them. So whatever the master has told us, if we take to it and with lot of faith, simply doing it is a powerful way to transform. We can change completely. Yo mahanu bhavanu sevate. Why we start looking at higher responses? We respond to the world from our level of ignorance. When we are in the company, companionship of a wise person, we see how that wise person would respond to the same situation. Our perception changes. Our methods of responses changes. We transform. Yo mahanu bhavanu sevate. One who serves great master will simply, simply transform. Who crosses Maya? One who gives up attachment. Ya Sangam Tyajati, Yo Mahanu Bhavanu Sevate, Nirmamo. Ah, third point, Nirmamo Bhavati. Nirmamo Bhavati. Nirmama means not mine. Give up the feeling of mine. This is one of the strongholds of Maya. Maya gets us down here strongly. In Tulsi Ramayan, Lakshman puts a few questions to Ram that is called Sri Ramagita. Lakshman goes and asks, what is Maya? What is knowledge, jnana, vairagya, bhakti? Different questions and Ram answers. And the first question is, what is Maya? Mm -hmm. To that Ram says, I and mine is Maya. Maya rumor torutai Maya. What is, whenever we take something as mine, that's where the Maya begins. Do not own them. Don't claim as mine. Let them be. If something is given, it is not yours, it is his. He has allowed it to be with you for a while. Objects and people, same law applies. It is his, he has allowed it to be with us for a while. Let him take it back when he wants. We should not own. This ownership is a problem. Every small thing we get and that which is allowed to be with us for a while, we start thinking we are owners. Don't own. Drop this ownership. We do it in many, many places. Suppose... You have checked into a hotel. Hmm? When you checked in to a hotel and someone else asks you, which is your room? <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> room number 303 is my room. For how long? Room 303 is your room for how long? We say my room, right? You know for sure it is not your room. You know for sure you are not owning it. You are there for a moment, for a while. Room 303 is my room. Uh -huh. 
suppose the television in that room is not working. You call the reception and say, my television is not working. Water is not coming in my room. And when you have to check out of that room, what do you carry with you? My television? You will carry the television of a hotel room? You carry nothing, right? We went there, things were around us, we had them, we left them, we walked out. We, for transaction's sake, we said it is mine, mine. But we did not mean it at all when I said it is my room or my TV. I did not mean it. I just had it. When I have to walk out, we walk out without it. No ownership. Don't own. The Lord has given something, it is His. Ownership is a wrong idea. It's a wrong idea that we have cultivated. We own it, we own it. And when we say my house, the cockroach which lives in your house, you ask that cockroach, whose house is it? What would the cockroach say? Oh, it is so-and-so's house? The cockroach will say, it is my house. The lizard living there will say, it is my house. The birds which have built a nest there, my house. How many owners are there? <laughs> they do not know. It is my house. Ah. The lizard does not know. The cockroach or the bird does not know. You think you know. And you think, why you know? Because if I want, I can throw them out anytime. It's my house. It is in my power. I can chuck them out anytime. Ah. Who can chuck you out anytime? There's somebody beyond you who owns that house. Isn't it? We are here permanently. There is a force behind us. Wise way of living, intelligent way of living. Don't own anything. Caretaker. I am taking care of it. That's it. Not owning anything, but taking care. Whatever is provided, take care. That is your dharma. Take care of it well. Don't own it. Nirmamo bhavati. Who will overcome maya? The person who learns to live here without owning anything. I've come here with nothing. We go with nothing. In between, various things come to us. Just have them. Don't own them. Nirmamo bhavati. Then he says, the next one in Sutra 47, Yo vivikta sthanam sevate lo, yo lokabandam unmulayati. Yo yaha vivikta sthanam sevate. A person who spends time in solitude can overcome maya. Vivikta sthanam sevate. Now this is a beautiful point. Spend time in solitude by yourself alone. This is very powerful method. How long? A few minutes daily. Let us say 20 minutes daily. As a sadhana you try. 20 minutes daily sit by yourself. Just nobody. Do nothing. Can I, can I do japa? No, afterwards. Not in this 20 minutes. Can I read something? No, not that time, afterwards. 20 minutes 
sit in a place, do nothing, just sit by yourself. Try. Preferably, if you can, if you are not on the traveling side of your life, if you can, preferably same time, same place would be more effective. If you are a traveler, then you can't. This advantage is not there. But otherwise, same time, same place, go sit there. It can be under a tree, it can be in your balcony, it can be in your room, it can be in your terrace, wherever, just sit quietly. What should I do? That is what, you should do nothing. Puja, Japa, no, later, later. This 20 minutes, don't take any of them, just be yourself. What happens? Try. In the beginning, you may find yourself restless and the restlessness may slowly settle down. You may start appreciating things around. This is how the process are. Beginning it would be restless to sit quietly, very restless. How to sit quietly? Something or other you feel like doing. And then the restlessness settles down. You may start liking. You may see the birds in the garden or maybe just sitting and looking at a leaf and suddenly you will find the leaf more attractive. All the while it was there, we never noticed. But now that I've settled down, I start looking at it. I start appreciating things. You may feel the breeze passing through you. You may like all this. So the first it could be restless, second you may like it, but still continue. After some time you get used to all the goodness also around, if you continue to do it regularly. There would come a point where the mind is no more restless, nor the mind is okay with everything in the world, it has seen it will turn on itself. This is very important. When the mind turns on itself is important. When the mind turns on itself, we understand. That's when we realize what is my strength, what is my weakness. Solitude is like a mirror. It will slowly make us see what we are. Not what, what others think we are. Or what we make others think what we are. No. What we are. Solitude will show us. The difficult part is the initial stage is going to be hard. Because you will feel restless, etc. We do this program, Youth Empowerment Program in India, YEP. One of the things is uh, these youngsters who are um, young graduates, 20, 21 years old, they have to be inside a room for minimum 24 hours. Solitude. No books, no japa, nothing. Go inside the room and stay. 24 hours, we lock the room from outside. Basic minimum food given. My phone, not allowed. My music system, not allowed. What am I allowed with? Nothing. I, we don't even allow you to carry your books. Go inside. Some children are smart. They know it is 24 hours inside is difficult. So they know, you know, like uh, sometimes it is their turn coming. We may pick them in alphabetical order and all that. Sometimes they guess also, okay, today he may call me, you know. So once this exercise starts, they go for jogging daily. All kinds of things they do is just that you're tired. And when you are inside the room, sleep. Sleep as much as you can. How long can you sleep? Eight hours? Ten hours? How long? Ah, sleep. 
Now imagine you go inside, daytime, we send you to the room by 8 o'clock and you are tired, exhausted already and you sleep. By 9 or 9.30 in the morning you went to sleep. How long will you sleep? Till evening 5? You get up right sometime. After getting up you may still have another 14 hours to... And you can't even sleep now. These people, I tell you, some of them are. One of the boys confessed, saying, Swamiji, it was too harsh. And I just do not know what to do. So what did you do? I used to remove the bulb. Keep it down. After five minutes, go put it up. Put the switch on, uh, working. Go to the next bulb. I, I want to do something. I can't sit quietly. Remove the furniture from one place. Put it up. Reorganize the room. Look at it. Bring it back. Do something. I mean, what is so difficult just sitting quietly doing nothing? What is difficult? Why is it difficult? The pressure of the vasanas, the rajoguna, disturbs us. But let us attempt this. 20 minutes daily, preferably same time, same place, solitude. 20 minutes only. You may start looking at the watch. 15 minutes up, 16 minutes up. Self-imposed discipline. In a week, every day, 20 minutes. In a week, one day, maybe one hour or 90 minutes alone. 90 minutes you just sit quietly. Awake, quiet, 90 minutes. Try 90 minutes, 20 minutes is easy to manage. 90 minutes sitting quietly with eyes open. Not with eyes closed, with eyes open, sit quietly, 20 minutes, easy. 90 minutes could be hard, try. Once in a week for 90 minutes. Once in a month, maybe for three hours, try. By yourself. You know, in this process, if you do, once in a year, probably 24 hours solitude by yourself. 20 minutes daily. 90 minutes once a week. Three hours, quite in a month. 24 hours in a year. Make this a practice. This solitude becomes a seat of introspection. It mind turns on itself and we start introspecting to find out where am I heading, what am I doing and at some point in this process there would be brilliant questions coming out. These questions which come out from inside are imp important because some of them would be absolutely brilliant questions because introspection would churn. When the churning happens in the mind through introspection, from there all kinds of things will come. Brilliance will also come out. Suppose, let us say, you are sitting quietly. A lot of churning has happened. And just I'm giving a sample. One question comes out to you. It's your life. What are you doing with it? Just this question comes to you. From within this question has come. It's your life and what are you doing with it? When someone puts this question, your receptivity and understanding of it could be different. But if this question comes from inside, where you are asking yourself, it's my life and what am I doing with it? Now understand? Whatever answer you give for that would be your direction. 
It's my life and what am I doing with it? Introspection, solitude will bring out, will do the churning. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything which is inside would come up. They have to come up. Solitude is powerful. So Naradrishi says, to overcome Maya, practice solitude. Quiet. How do I go? Like I told you, 20 minutes, 90 minutes, 3 hours, 24 hours, practice. It would be very, very powerful. It will churn and the right kind of questions will rise in our mind. When they come from within, we will find an answer to it quickly. Others telling us we may not notice it. They could be right in their observation. They could be partly right in their observation. They could be absolutely wrong. But when you see it from within, there is no way you will stop but make the remedial changes. That's why spending time in solitude is very, very important. Most of these great achievements you will find, it has come from those moments of quietude where they've withdrawn, stayed by themselves. Solitude is a great churner, churning. And once we start churning, whatever is inside would slowly come out and they need to come out. Lots of things have gone and in, good and bad. They need to get out. Solitude will help us to get out. Otherwise, cleansing of the mind for higher quiet, I mean, quietitude of the mind, silence of the mind would not be possible unless we churn and get these things out. More of this we will take up tomorrow. We have seen four points. Kastarati, Kastarati Maya, who crosses Maya? Sangam Tejati, first point. Mahanu Bhavanu Sevate, second point, serving a great teacher. Third point, Nirmamo Bhavati, don't own anything. Just have and move around, not owning. Nirmamo Bhavati, fourth point, spending time in solitude. Sevate. More of this we will take up tomorrow. Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Sri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om